Hey, Grade 7. Welcome to another uh, video of Mr. V teaching math. And today we're moving on to something called simple interest. So our goal here is to use various strategies to calculate the interest on savings account balances or loans. Uh, you notice that interest is highlighted. I just wanted to read something in case you're not sure what that is. But when you deposit money in a bank, the bank actually pays you for the right to use your money. What the bank will do is they'll take your money, they'll invest it uh, in, in various places to make themselves money. And what they'll do is they'll pay you a part of that profit. That's called interest. Um, now, the problems that we look at today in simple interest, the amount of interest that, that the book says the bank is giving you is like really high. Uh, in reality, for those of you who have a savings account, you're probably making less than a percent um, on your savings each month, um, which is not a lot. Your banks make a lot of money off of you and don't pay you a lot to keep for the right to use their money. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this problem where uh, Terry deposits $200 in the bank for one year in a, in a special savings account called a GIC. And the bank offers to pay 6% interest, which is a lot. So Terry wants to know how much money she'll have in her account at the end of the year. Uh, and so there are, uh, that's the main question. How much money is Terry going to have uh, earned by the end of the year? How much interest will she have earned by the end of the year? And so there are basically two ways that we can calculate this. We can find out um, basically 6% of $200. Okay, and we know that we can say, well, 6% is 0 0.06 times 200. So 0 0.06 times 200 is $12. It's 12. So she's going to earn $12 uh, on interest on her, on her investment. And then what we have to do is we have to add that to our original amount, which means that by the end of the year, she will have $212 in her, in her account. So she'll have earned that money on top of the, the original investment. Okay. The second method that I wanted to show you is this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to imagine for a second that we want to try and make this process here a lot simpler. So rather than figuring out what 6% of 200 is and then adding that on, we're going to pick a percentage that's going to include the $200 plus the 6%. And the way that we do that to include the $200 is say, well, uh, if I want to include all of $200, I need at least 100%. That'll be all of the $200. And then I need that other 6%, which shows how much interest that she's going to earn. And so when I add those two things together, I get 106%. So I can find out 106% of $200. We just spent yesterday figuring out percents greater than 100. If I figure out 106% of $200, that's going to tell me right away how much money she earns on interest. So what this means as a decimal is 1.06 times 200. So I have 1.06 times 200, which automatically tells me that she's going to earn $212. So I'm able to simplify the process from this to this. Okay, you're welcome to use this method. Absolutely use this method. But if you understand this, uh, or even if you don't really, come talk to me and I'll help you out with this as well because this has implications for sales tax, uh, for discounts, and all that stuff. Um, so it's helpful to know. Um, but that's how you start calculating simple interest on things. Uh, and so the problems that you'll be looking at in the book um, we'll ask you those things. How much interest is so-and-so earning? How much will so-and-so have at the end of the year if they earn, you know, 12% interest on an investment of $725? Um, so you need to be able to do it both ways, um, but it's helpful if you, if you do know how to do it both ways.